Hey guys, Mr. V here with a quick tutorial on the strawberry and we're going to create something like this in Photoshop and so we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to get started show you how to do this from the beginning. Guys, just stick with me here. Um, we're going to do the Photoshop version first kind of as normal and then we'll um, then I will show you the Photopea way to do this as well. Um, so if you go into your Echo agenda, today we're going to kind of look at what we're doing. We're just going to kind of put our um, collages on pause just for a second we're gonna do an activity that I call the strawberry and the strawberry kind of my thinking behind it is to just get everybody on the same page with kind of understanding the basics of some of the tools and stuff in Photoshop and guys what you're gonna do is kinda of show me what you can do with one strawberry layer and then you're gonna turn that in and so after you get this practice I really think that you're going to understand pretty much everything that you need um, whatever I teach you today with the strawberry you're gonna be able to expand that and apply that to pretty much whatever you want to do with your um, collages so what we need to do is we're gonna create an eight and a half by eleven inch document and we're gonna call it strawberry or something similar to that and then we need to download the strawberry PNG and place it into our document alright so we're just gonna scroll down here and we're gonna click on the strawberry PNG and we just need to right click and download this image so I'm going to save image as and I'm just gonna save this actually I've already downloaded it and I'm just gonna click save and I'm gonna click yes and that's gonna to download to my downloads folder so now let's go back and let's look at some of our instructions so if we click on the Dropbox which is where this is going to be uh, you guys are going to submit this on um, Wednesday I believe is the due date that I have on it but I might actually push that till Friday um, just in case anybody has any trouble and so this is kinda giving us some directions that I'm gonna kinda keep open on the side here so that I can look at while I'm working so it says start a new eight and a half by eleven inch document name it strawberry and show me that you can do the following in Photoshop and Photopea your task is to do something funny or to create your own strawberry show me more than one layer watch the lesson first and actually guys this is building off of what we did last week on creating a new document so if you haven't watched that definitely go back and check that out before you continue watching this okay and then when we're finished we're gonna submit our JPEG here so we're gonna learn how to do all of these seven or eight things so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing is making a new eight and a half by eleven inch document we're going to go to create new now I could open and I'll show you kind of the difference real quick. If I could, if if I wanted to, I could actually go and open up this strawberry. I'm just going to delete this because that's um, kind of the end product that I'm going to show you how to create. But if I wanted to, I could actually go and open something that is already on my computer. And a lot of people do this, and it's kind of like a big mistake because what they don't realize is, yeah, they're opening up the PNG inside of Photoshop, but they're not actually placing it inside of a canvas. And that's why you want to you want to create your eight and a half by eleven inch canvas first, or your document first, because watch, I'll show you. If we go up to image and click on image size you'll see that this is actually 17 inches by 20 inches so it's really big as far as inches but also the resolution is 72 and we want something more like 300 which we know is print quality so I'm gonna click cancel and I'm just gonna close this out you can do the same thing by clicking file and open I believe um, but we don't want to do that we want to create new just like we did last time um, in that first video and we're gonna to go to our print presets we're gonna click on letter size and that will give us eight and a half by eleven inches at 300 resolution so that's exactly what we want and then we're going to name this strawberry okay and I'll just click create so perfect we've got our blank new document if we click on the layer panel over here on the side you can see we just have our background layer and it's just a white plain piece of paper that we're starting with okay so what's the first thing we're learning we're learning how to um, place an object versus opening a file so that's basically what we just talked about we don't want to open a file like the strawberry just as it's by itself we want to place the strawberry inside of our document so I'm gonna go ahead and go back and open up my strawberry I'm just gonna open up a folder here and navigate to my downloads uh, let's see where did it go right here okay so here's my strawberry so 
Now what we're going to do is since we already have our 8.5 by 11 inch document, now what we can do is actually drag and drop this into our document. And when that happens, you see it actually gives us a brand new layer. So that's why I wanted you guys to start out with an 8.5 by 11 inch document first. And plus it's pr practice just to get your um, collage document set up. So you can see here is the first thing we're talking about is placing objects, which is what we just did. We drag and dropped and we placed an object inside of a pre-existing document. So that's good, okay? The next thing what we're gonna talk about is number two, rasterizing objects. And you might be thinking, that is the weirdest word I've ever heard. What does rasterize even mean? Well, something Photoshop does is whenever you drag and drop something into a document, it brings it in as what is called a smart object. And we know that it's a smart object when we actually see this blue X going through the middle of it. And we can actually, you know, size it and, you know, rotate it and stuff like that. But it's still a smart object. And what a smart object does is basically it allows um, Photoshop to preserve the quality and what it does is it tries to kind of add or take away pixels as we shrink or grow the size and it just kind of tries to preserve the quality but as long as this is a smart object we won't actually be able to draw on it or erase through it or twist it up or twist it around or manipulate it or do anything that we want to do with it so what we have to do whenever you bring something into Photoshop and you see these X, this X going through it, we have to hit the enter or the return key on our keyboard and that will actually place the object inside of the composition. So I'm going to hit enter and you see that makes the little X go away, but it's still a smart object. So what we have to do is rasterize it. So you'll pretty much have to do this with everything that you drag and drop in. Pretty much no matter what kind of a picture we bring into our you know document, we'll have to enter it and drop it and place it into the to the document, and then we'll we'll have to. Um, do this we'll have to rasterize the image and to do that you'll just right click on your layer and click rasterize and you see this little box this little paper icon that's in the very corner of our strawberry thumbnail for the this layer here you'll see that will go away whenever I click rasterize um, this little icon means that it's a smart object and what we're gonna do now is rasterize it so now it's no longer a smart object. You can see that little square went away. So now that means that this is something that we can actually make as pixels. And that's what a roster graphic is. Anything that's called a roster graphic is basically means it's something that's made out of pixels that we can paint on top of or manipulate. I'm going to go to my magnifying glass tool here at the bottom. And let's just zoom in and I'll show you that indeed that we're working with pixels. And so the more I zoom in, you see these little squares? Those are actually the individual pixels that are making up this image. You can zoom back out by clicking the minus on the um, magnifying glass, or just to make it easier, we can keep it on the plus to zoom in, and we can just come over here and click on fit screen, and that will zoom us all the way back out. But I just wanted to show you that this is now rasterized, and now we have it in pixel form where we can actually manipulate. Before we, before when it was a smart object and before we rasterized, we wouldn't have been able to actually, you know, take the eraser or the paintbrush and paint on top of this or do anything. So that's what you need to do. You need to rasterize all of your objects, okay? And you do that by right clicking and just clicking rasterize. Now, I'm going to skip over number three. I kind of did this out of order. Um, we want to learn how to transform an object first, and then we'll kind of talk about layers. So let's talk about transforming objects. So remember when I taught you Canva and we learned how to rotate and move stuff around and sh shrink it and size it? Well, you can do the exact same thing in Photoshop. So you see, like I said earlier, when this drop, when we drop this strawberry in, it came in as a new layer on top of the background layer. And that's great. That's exactly what we want. Um, and so we can move stuff around. If we go to this top tool right here, it kind of looks like an X or a cross. This is, the, this is called the move tool. And the move tool will allow us just to move objects around. And that's great. But what I want to do now is teach you how to transform an object. If you go to um, 
back into here inside of our project folder and you can click on Photoshop quick commands and today I'm going to teach you two commands I'm going to teach you how to undo which you can see here is actually just command Z you hold down command Z and that will undo anything that you've done um, say like if you messed up or you made a mistake but right now what we're talking about is transforming and to transform you hit command T on your keyboard command T for transform so let's go back to our list and now I want to show you what I mean so if we just hit command T okay you see now I've got this blue box around okay if you haven't rasterized your object you'll still see that X and that's telling you you need to rasterize okay but <clears throat> now that we've rasterized we can size this when we hit command T and basically this will allow us to make it big or small or rotate it you know or basically do whatever we want to with it all right so what I want to do is kind of shrink this down kind of like this and maybe I'll kind of rotate it like so and I will to actually get that blue box to go away away and to place it remember we have to hit enter so I'm just gonna hit enter and now I've got my strawberry there just the way I want him so that's the first thing is basically learning how to transform an object another thing about transform let's go ahead go ahead and hit command T again so I've got my box around and you can see here um, any of these corner pins that I grab will allow me to size but if you hold down the shift key on your keyboard while you do that that will actually allow you to stretch and to distort the image and so say if you wanted to do something kind of funny maybe we wanted to make this like a really you know tall and skinny strawberry we could do something like that to him but I don't want to do that I just wanted to show you how to do that um, in case you wanted to do it um, I'm gonna hit command Z to undo what I did but you know just in case you were wondering that is how you would be able to to do that but just keep in mind that you are distorting the image when you do that and so basically as long as I hold down the shift key it will allow me basically to rotate that and stretch it out however I want to if I let go of the shift key you can see it constrains the proportions and keeps everything exactly the same proportion all right so I'm going to go ahead and place that by hitting enter and now what's next I want to show you guys how to order and duplicate layers so you see here when I brought this strawberry in it created a new layer on top of the background layer so if I wanted to create a new layer it's really easy all I have to do is come in and hit this box that has the plus sign in it and that will create a new blank layer on top and that means I can come in and actually bring something else on top into that layer it comes in as a smart object again so once again I have to hit enter and then right click on the layer and click rasterize by the way that uh, layer panel likes to hide so sometimes you just have to click over here on the side to get it to come out but actually I don't want to do that because it's easier if you want to just copy something or duplicate something all you have to do is just duplicate the layer so I'm gonna delete this top layer by dragging it down to this trash can and what I want to do is actually just make a copy of this strawberry and you can do that by you can you can duplicate a layer by dra clicking and dragging it down to the new layer icon and let go and you'll see it just actually makes a copy of that layer so see now I've got two strawberries you just can't tell because they're right ones right on top of the other because I just copied this so if you go up to your move tool you can actually click and drag and you see now I've got two strawberries I can do the same thing once again I can duplicate this strawberry bring it down to the plus sign and move it out again and you can see now I've got three strawberries now layers are kind of tricky and I would say layers are the biggest thing that's hardest for people to grasp when they're new to learning Photoshop so what you want to do is just realize you always want to make make pay attention to what layer you're working on and just really be careful about which layer that you are that you have highlighted down here so you can see I can actually reorder layers so let's say I want to make this middle layer like maybe he's the leader and I'm gonna make him just a little bit bigger maybe I'm gonna hold down shift maybe we'll make him a little bit taller than the rest of these guys and maybe we'll flip him horizontal let's see if I hit um, I can actually right click and click on flip horizontal and that'll flip him the other way around and then I'll just hit enter 
So now let's say I want him to be kind of the main guy who's in the front, all right? Or I guess this could be a girl strawberry. Maybe we want her to be the main person in the front, okay? So what I'm gonna do is you see how this big strawberry is the one that's in the middle? I can drag and drop this layer onto the top and you see how now he or she is on the very top. You see how I did that? So you gotta think of these layers in terms of whatever is at the very top is what you see first. So these layers are basically like transparency papers. You guys know what transparency papers are? Um, you know, math teachers used to write on them um, in the old days. That's basically the same concept in Photoshop. So if I take this little strawberry on the very bottom, let's say I highlight it and I hit Command T, and let's make him like maybe the smaller one, and we'll put him kind of back there in the background. So let's say I wanted him to be on the top. So what I would do is just drag and drop him all the way to the top and see now he's in, he's kind of the one walking in the front. All right. So that's kind of how you would do that. All right, guys. But I think I want to actually keep him in the background and we will make him maybe just a little bit bigger. So command T to size and we'll size him up just a little bit and we'll kind of put him back there in the background. And I think this other guy, I want to make him kind of rotate this way. And we'll kind of spread these guys out and we'll hit enter and then I'll move the biggest one kind of in the middle kind of you know kind of front and center like so so does that kind of make sense guys you kind of just got to play around with your layers moving stuff around and um, let's see what's next so we learned how to order layers and transform objects um, we actually learned how to size objects already and actually already kind of talked to you guys about how to undo an action so Let's talk about that again real quick. So basically, let's say I did something or I moved something around or let's say I took the eraser tool and I erased through that layer by accident. So let's say I made a mistake and you can actually see this actually illustrates how layers work a little better too. So as I move around this top layer, you can see you can see what's underneath the layers that are underneath. But anyways, let's say that I wanted to you know, I made a mistake and I want to undo what I did. I can actually undo that by coming up to edit and then clicking on undo move. So if I click on undo, it will say it, it will undo what I did. But actually, you see right here, it says that there's a keyboard shortcut for undo. That is control Z. All right. Control Z was that other keyboard shortcut that I showed you. So let's say if I move that over here and I didn't really want to do that, I can just hit control Z and it just undoes what I did, okay? Now, another thing I wanna talk about that'll even make it even easier to undo actions is something called the history panel. The history panel is really cool because actually what Photoshop does is it records everything that you do right from the very beginning. So let's say you wanna go back in time and undo like 10 moves. Well, you can do that by do, using the history panel. The history panel's right here on this corner it usually looks like an arrow and when you click it it will open up and we can kind of drag this panel out and expand it and look guys it shows us every single step that we've done since we opened up from the beginning so see I can go all the way back and just do every, look at all of the um, different um, basically all of the different actions that I've taken so if you want to go back you can always use the undo panel alrighty guys so basically now is really the last thing I wanted to show you guys is before we export which is the last step which you guys mostly already know how to do that because from the last video lesson that I gave you but I want to show you guys how to use the brush and the eraser tool and this is so you can actually do some just some fun stuff you know if you want to draw a face or something on this strawberry um, I'm not asking you to make anything extravagant you know you're just turning something in to show me that you know how to do basically what I'm teaching you right now so if you want to do something similar to me if you want to get you know really fancy you could maybe put in a, a photograph that you find in the background make it look kind of interesting or just come up with your own you could make this strawberry into a character or something and that's what I want to do so like I showed you you can actually take the eraser tool and erase through but actually, I think what I want to do is draw a face, and I don't want to erase. I actually want to use a brush. So I'm going to click the plus sign. I'm going to make a new layer. That way I'm not drawing right on top of the strawberry. I'm going to, I'm going to draw on a separate layer. 
and I want to pick the color black. So I'm going to come down here and you can see it's actually already on the color black. But let's say let's say we want to use the color green. Maybe he's going to have a green smile. So we can do that by clicking on this color and we can click any pretty much any color we want and then click OK. And you see now we've loaded that color with the color green. So now I can come to my brush tool and now the brush and the eraser work pretty much the same you can actually come up to this little arrow right here and this will allow you to change the size of the brush and so I don't want a really big brush I want kind of a small brush and we can actually change the hardness of the brush as well so you can see down here it gives us brushes with soft edges and brushes with hard edges so it just kind of depends on what you want but you can change those settings right there and basically I think I'm just gonna draw kind of you know just a little smiley face on the strawberry here I kinda messed up here I know that's really bad and let's see I'll just draw <laughs> let's undo that command Z uh, maybe something like this I'm really bad at drawing but that's okay you're just practicing so here's my little smiley face on the strawberry and maybe let's give him some hands maybe he's waving at us and you guys are laughing at me right now I know this is really bad <laughs> okay he's happy all right <laughs> so um, yeah guys just play around with it and you can see here I've actually I did this on a separate layer so I can come to my move tool and I can move this around you know and basically you know that way I don't mess up the strawberry you can also turn on and off layers by just clicking this little eyeball so if you don't want to delete a layer by throwing it away but you still don't want it to be seen you can just toggle the visibility with this little eyeball um, box okay but that's basically what I want to do so now I'm finished I want to export I'm gonna go up to file and now I know that I taught you guys to always save as a PSD first if you want to you can go ahead and do that we can click save as and my looks a little bit different because I'm on Windows but basically it's the same thing I'm choosing where I want it to save I'm naming it and then I'm choosing the file type so we can go ahead and save this as a PSD just in case we want to get back and you know um, edit and change things later but once you do that you can actually go ahead and come up to file we'll click save as and we're gonna save this as a JPEG okay so I'm saving it as a JPEG inside of my uh, downloads folder I'm gonna click save we'll bring this all the way up to maximum quality and click OK so now I've got my JPEG and I can actually use that to drag and drop into here to submit or actually I would have to click that plus button alrighty guys and that's basically it um, and if you kinda stuck with me through the whole Photoshop way guys it's basically the same exactly the same thing inside of Photopea we'll just go to Photopea click new project we'll go to our print preset and we'll click on letter size and then we can title this strawberry and then um, click create and pretty much exactly the same thing all right we can um, basically um, open up anything new um, I'm just gonna try this let's see if we can actually drag and drop and it looks like it will it'll let us do that so we can drag and drop right hit enter to place and we're gonna come over here to the side you see where it says L A Y that's our layers panel and you can see we can do all of the same stuff we can right click click rasterize it's basically all the same guys um, um, it's it's pretty much all the same right so we can duplicate layers by dragging and drop to the paper icon move uh, we can go to our move tool and move um, these elements around and guys I think the only thing that's different is to transform you I don't know if command T if, I don't think command T or any of the keyboard shortcuts will work since we're on a website um, but to transform you just click this checkbox that says transform controls and that will turn on transform for you so that you can resize and you know basically do everything exactly the way I showed you in Photoshop we'll hit enter to place and there we go and yeah pretty much all of the same thing um, I believe you should be able to come up here to edit and undo um, you can also take a step forward or a step backwards and 
that is basically it, guys. Um, I think, yeah, you've got the eraser tool. You've got the paintbrush tool. Guys, let me know if there's any problems with anything that you're having problems doing with inside of. Um, oh, um, you also see here's the here's the confusing part is you have to uncheck the transform to place it back the way it was. Otherwise, you'll just keep seeing those boxes popping up on everything. So if you don't want to if you want to transform something, but then you want to, you know, place it back to the way it was, you would just hit enter and then you'll click um, off of the checkbox. Okay. So guys, that's basically about it. If there's anything you come across inside of here that you can't figure out and it's still different than Photoshop, just let me know um, and I'll be more than happy to help you with that. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Have a blessed one. God bless.